Uh, hi, I appreciate the chance to talk today about reducing the toil and risks of multi-cluster Kubernetes version upgrade using Lodal Nova and just-in-time clusters. I'm Ann Holler. So a little Nova simplifies the management and usage of multiple Kubernetes workload clusters. The way it does this is by introducing a single Kubernetes control plane cluster that automatically schedules Kubernetes objects onto a set of workload clusters as per a set of placement policies. Nova has recently introduced an optional feature called just-in-time cloud workload clusters. Nova just-in-time clusters put cloud clusters that have been idle for a specified amount of time into standby state. And standby means either delete them from the cloud or at least reduce their resources to only the cloud um, hidden control plane. Nova just-in-time exits the clusters from standby, restoring the resources to the clusters when Nova schedules uh, objects to those clusters. And Nova JIT can optionally clone, create additional cloud workload clusters if they're needed to satisfy a placement policy. So let's look at how this technology can reduce the toil and risk of multi-cluster Kubernetes version upgrade. This will be a simple use case and the uh, associated YAML files are at this link. So basically we'll start with just a one Kubernetes control uh, plane, which is the Nova control plane, and then two Kubernetes clusters, one for uh, dev, for our application of interest, and one for prod for our application of interest. So we see that, we see the, our uh, control plane for Nova, we see the policies coming in and the placement requests coming in. So this setup is hosted on three uh, EKS clusters. So the Nova CP cluster hosts the Nova control plane cluster, and then the Nova work dev is the workload cluster that's running our um, uh, workload of interest. Let's say that that's the guestbook app, and the Nova work prod is a cluster that's hosting the, um, the other copy of our uh, app, app of interest, which is the prod version of it. And so this is the three clusters at EKS, and you can see that the two workload clusters are currently running version 1.24 of Kubernetes. And if you look at this cluster from the standpoint of the Nova control plane, it knows that there's two workload clusters, it knows that they're at version 1.24, uh, and they're ready. They're running, they're not in standby because they're busy. So what is the low risk, um, low toil way of upgrading those clusters? Um, let's start with the dev cluster. It's basically a three-step process. The operator requests that Nova control plane schedule via policy a dummy pod to a non-existent cluster. And so Nova clone creates that cluster. Then the operator requests an upgrade of that cluster to the new version of Kubernetes that they want. And this upgrade is straightforward and low risk because that cluster is not running anything interesting from the standpoint of the user. And then the third step is the user changes the Nova policy that scheduled the, that workload of, of interest to the original cluster to schedule it on the new cluster. And so when this is done, when the policy is changed, Nova automatically reschedules all the associated objects from that that are governed by that policy to the new cluster. And now the operator can check and make sure that the dev workloads are running fine on that new cluster. If they're not, it's easy for the operator to change that policy again to kind of roll back by sending the uh, workloads back to the cluster that wasn't upgraded. But if all goes well, we're done with the dev cluster upgrade. And this is actual you know, uh, execution of these three steps. So at the top, you see the original two clusters. You see the policy that deployed the dummy pod. You see the upgrade. So you see the new cluster. And at the bottom, you see that the new cluster that's running version 1.25 is now ready. It's not idle. It's running the dev clusters. And the other uh, cluster at 1.24 is idle. So. Rinse and repeat, do the same thing for your prod cluster. You hope it works because it worked fine for dev, but you know, sometimes things happen. And so finally you get to this post-upgrade state where you have the two new clusters running 1.25, you have the two old clusters running 1.24 in standby state, and they've actually been deleted because this standby state policy was deletion from EKS, and all you have now are the two active 1.25 clusters. So that's it. I really appreciate getting a chance to talk to it, talk about this, and uh, learn more at our website, and uh, thanks, thanks a lot.